Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, or review uh, the scientific method. I know some of you guys had trouble on the test about uh, independent and dependent variables, and um, I want to make sure that you guys are clear on uh, how to identify those. So I'm going to use our uh, favorite example, which is the muscles. So when the students um, had an experiment, they wanted to find out what was killing the muscles. So they decided to take some muscles and put them into uh, some containers. Now what they did was they put the same number of muscles in each container. They put the same amount of water in each container. They put the same temperature of water in each container. They made sure everything was exactly equal. And what we do is call that controlling variables. So when we have an experiment and we make sure everything is fair or the same in each um, container, uh, we're controlling our variables. Okay. The next thing that you need to understand is what an independent variable and a dependent variable is. An independent variable is the one thing that we change. And I don't know if you guys remember me putting up my finger. The one thing that we change is the independent variable. So independent is the one thing we change. And the one thing that we changed in the muscle group is in this one we added phosphate. If you remember, we were trying to find out what was killing the muscles. And so in one container, we didn't put anything other than the muscles and the water. And, but in the other container, we put the muscles and the water. And one more thing, we put phosphate in. Okay. Now, the dependent variable is the thing that we're trying to find out. What are we measuring? So the dependent variable is what are we trying to find out? Well, we're trying to find out if phosphate kills muscles. How can we tell if phosphate kills muscles? Well, we need to count how many muscles die in the, the tank with the phosphate. So the dependent variable is the thing that we measure or count. And I don't know if you guys remember in class, I said the dependent variable is the data that we collect. Okay. The next thing that you need to understand is the difference between a uh, control group and a test group or experimental group. So the control group is the one that we don't actually change anything in. We keep all the variables the same and we don't add that extra thing like over here. So this one is the control group, and that's usually the closest to normal. So th this would be a, a, a muscle's normal um, environment. The experimental group or test group is the one that has the independent variable. Okay, That's the one that has the thing that we're changing. Okay. So in the test group, we're finding out if phosphate actually leads to um, the death of the muscles. And the reason that we have a control group is so that we can have something to compare it to. So we need to compare the results of the experimental group with the results of the control group. And that will help us to infer whether or not phosphate is causing the muscle population to decrease. So if you remember our um, data that we uh, made up, so out of 10,000 muscles, we said 600 of them died in the control group. In the experimental group, we said 1,800 out of 10,000 died. Now, we would expect that living things will die, so 600 muscles out of 10,000 is an acceptable number of muscles to die naturally. So we can say that about 600 muscles should die from natural causes. But if you look over here, a lot more than 600 died in this group. 
So we can infer that 600 of those died from natural causes, which means 1,200 died from something else in this test group. And through logic and inference, we can say that phosphate could be the factor that caused the death of those extra 1,200 muscles. So that's what you need to be able to do in an experiment.